really only had in mind one or two episodes, and so when I went along to the meeting, that's that's what was on the table, um, and uh, you know I was delighted to get the part. And uh, after I think after the two episodes were over, which was that was really it for the character, uh, Joss had. Um, came up to me during filming and said, you know, we're, we've got a little more we could do with this guy if, if you're available and you want to stick around. I said, sure. And that's kind of how it went for the rest of season three. They would just keep finding ways to insert him into the story uh, week in and week out uh, until we came to the finale of season three of Buffy. And I know you were asking about Angel, but, but since you're asking about the character and that's where it originates, I'm, I'm taking you all the way back to, to Buffy for a second. Um, and then... Uh, and then we got to the finale of Buffy, and there were, he shared with me when we were shooting a, a big fight scene, he said, there's been a big roaring debate whether to kill your character off or keep him alive in, in, in the writer's room. We've been discussing it. And uh, he said, what's, what's your feeling on the matter? And uh, I said, well, you know, obviously I'm partial to keeping him alive. And uh, he said, well, lucky for you, I am too. Um, so uh, by then, Angel was, uh, was up and running. Uh, they had shot one or two episodes at least. Uh, Buffy went into hiatus, and then um, somewhere along a month or two later, he called and said, hey, I want to talk to you about an idea I have. Uh, uh, let's let's grab breakfast. So we did, and uh, and that's where he proposed the idea of bringing Wesley over to Angel. Um, he wanted to kind of change up the chemistry on that show a little and felt that that uh, that maybe that character I was playing could could lighten things in a way that they were trying you know that they were looking for at at that time um, and again we didn't really know what the duration of that would be uh, whether that would just be for the first season and and they would kind of get their bearings and and uh, rework it again or whether it would be for the life of the show if the show would even have a life because of course you never know with TV um, at any rate, uh, I was delighted to to join, and um, and I think right away it, it, everybody felt we all sort of felt like it it, it was a good fit um, this this goofy character, which which they reworked a little to to fit him into Angel, um, but nobody I don't think any of us had really any idea what the the following five seasons would bring for the character or the show. Um, the, the, that was very much something that evolved. Um, Joss and the writers on that show um, had a great rapport with the, the cast, and, uh, and as they saw stories developing on screen, it would open up ideas for them, and then uh, and uh, and so it it was a, a work in. Pro- that's why I say it was a, a kind of a, a work in progress. I I think they found that as as they began to torture and darken Wesley they they were enjoying it <laughs> and uh and it was bringing new elements up for the for the story um but as i look back on it now i i i i am as sort of as amazed as anyone at what the the breadth and depth of that uh story was and uh and how far we went in in really every direction with that character and I guess, in a way, I felt like it was, even though we, we'd been on air for over 100 episodes and it was five years in, in a way, I felt like when the show was ending, we were setting, really setting the stage to do another another great five seasons, especially for, for the character I was playing. So I was sorry when the, when the network pulled the plug because uh, so, many, so much was possible at that point because of everything that we'd explored. Uh, so I don't know if that answers your question. It was a long answer, but... Uh, but a lot of people do say, you know, now that it's back in reruns and, and I think the show has a second or third life now uh, in, uh, in syndication and, and people, uh, people do often comment that they, they start out at the beginning of Angel and then they can't believe how much the character, uh, particularly Wesley, has changed during the course of that, of that show. There was a lot of growth, I think, in Wesley's character throughout the whole the whole series. It's like it was like he was kind of more of a, I don't want to say a child, but he was really kind of more immature at the beginning of it, and then he started just growing up throughout the whole the whole story arc. Oh, I completely was, agree. Yeah, that's very well put. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I think he started. Uh, he had he was very naive and had a lot of big ideas about himself and the world, and I think that uh, he did have a he had a he had a a lot of growing up to do um and the you know the hell that they put him through was his was his his growing up 
so uh, he had a few rites of passage during his years on the on TV. Yeah, that's what makes him really kind of a rare TV character that he, you know, you kind of see him kind of transition from this naive character to somebody that's basically can stand up on his own if he needs to. So I thought that was just really interesting, and I said I was watching, I think I was watching an episode this morning about that too, you know, and it was just really kind of an interesting kind of story arc. So I think yeah. that Wesley's always going to be somebody that all of us, all of us Whedonverse fans are going to recognize as probably one of the strongest characters we've ever seen. So. Oh, well, I, I, I consider myself lucky to have, to have, you know, been part of it. I uh, The real credit goes to Joss. And David Greenwald and, the, and all of the writers who uh, who who kept opening opening the doors for that character and and laying the path. I mean, it was only for me to to walk through those doors and take the steps. And so uh, so you know, it was my good fortune to to have the chance to play that character and have the opportunity to uh, try all of the things that we attempted with that character. Um, and uh, it was an awful lot of fun. It, it really was. I. Uh, he that Wesley holds a very special place in my heart. No, no question. If if they ever were, I mean, if if Josh was ever going to do a, a Buffy movie or something like that, because there's there's been a lot of people saying that they really do want to see a Buffy movie to kind of sum up everything. Do you think that you would do it? Well, I <laughs> that's a, such an open question. I I'm very loyal to Josh, and um, and it, put it this way, it would be hard to say no. But uh, but of course it would depend on the circumstances and the story and you know there are all sorts of factors that would come into come into a decision like that. But uh, but I mean in principle I would of course I would be open to it no question I, I I definitely I definitely would be excited to read that script if he ever sat down and wrote it. Uh, and I suppose that would be my first requirement <laughs> was that Joss had written it. Okay, well, let's talk about working with Josh now on Dollhouse. I mean, what was it like when he gave you the call that he said that he wanted be, you to be on Dollhouse? Oh, I was delighted and surprised. I, you know, I hadn't crossed my mind. Um, I had tuned into the show for most of season one, and uh, you know, I found it very intriguing. Um, and I saw it growing and changing and finding its its voice uh, throughout that season. And uh, and, and Joss and I are, are friends, you know, outside of work. So I would hear about it from from that perspective from him from time to time. I would check in on him and see how things were going. And you know, he would share a little bit about about work and stuff. So um, so I was aware of the show, but uh, I was you know very surprised. He was actually over at our house one day. I think he was visiting the baby and uh, during the summertime. And uh, I think I had asked him if the show was coming back or was he ready for the show to come back or something. And he said, well, as a matter of fact, it was. And uh, and um, part of it coming back, he had given the networks, you know, two or three things that he wanted to do in the season. And one of them was there's a senator named Daniel Perrin and it must be played by Alexis Denisoff. So I was pretty floored by that and delighted and, uh, and uh, so happy to get the chance to work with him again. Uh, not as much as I would have liked because he directed the first episode in which my character is introduced, but, but only introduced very briefly. So, um, so although it, it was nice to be in his world, actually he's so busy uh, running a show that, uh, that I didn't get to see as much of him as I would have liked. But, uh, but he made a pass at, at everything that the character, uh, you know, all those scripts kind of passed through him, and um, he got it shaped exactly how he wanted, and and uh, and I was I'm really happy with it. I had a great experience on that show. Um, it was terrific to be working with Eliza again, um, in, and uh, in different circumstances. The last time she and I had worked together, uh, I was playing Wesley, and she was playing Faith, and uh, I think she was kicking my ass. Um, you know, six different ways to Sunday. So um, this was a little bit different this time, and uh, we uh, had a lot of we had a lot of fun together. Yeah, I was going to mention another one of the stars of Dollhouse who we've had on the show before, Miracle Lori, and she's just the nicest person in the world. What was like working with Miracle? Oh, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, I was lucky to get a, a, one or two scenes with her, and she was a, a real delight, uh, charming and beautiful, and I think she's got a, a big future. 
I think we all do. We all do, and we love her. I had her on the show twice, and she's just been so so bubbly, and she's so great. And she just really is kind of, uh, you know, she is, is definitely changing the stereotype of what a typical TV actress should be, and we're all, like, super psyched that she's doing so successful. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. She's she's a kick. I, I think she's a treat, yeah. What's going to be interesting is that um, Dollhouse is going to be back in December, and with the December episodes, they're going to be back-to-back, back, and I'm – Saw the uh, preview of new episodes coming up, and you're, you're really, really prominent, especially in the first two episodes we see coming back. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how, how, your, you know, how your character is and how uh, this stuff's coming up? I don't want you to give any spoilers or anything, but uh, a little bit about what's coming up for you. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll say what I think I can. Um, yeah, it's a, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Some people love to, to see things fresh. I know I do. Um, but uh, it won't ruin anything to know that I play a senator, uh, Daniel Perrin. He's a, a young, promising senator who is uh, very much on the hunt to bring down the um, the Rossum Corporation and, and the Dollhouse, which are interlinked. Um, and he's working with some very powerful people in Washington, and um, and he's got some some big guns uh that he's ready to blaze and uh things do not go exactly as planned shall we say um and it's a pretty i I think it's you know taken those two episodes taken together are as exciting as anything i i think i ever shot on angel i mean it's uh they really worked up a phenomenal story and uh I'm, I'm i'm really excited to see how it turned out it was it was thrilling i gotta say it was uh you know hairpin turns and it was high speed and it was uh surprising and um it was difficult to do but but thrilling so uh you know cross her fingers it it was uh it came off the page as well as as uh as it read well, looking at the previews, I think that's that's really can be stated that everybody's so excited about it, especially with with you showing up and uh, Summer Glau showing up, and you know I think everybody's kind of super psyched for these episodes in December. It's kind of kind of bad that they didn't they, they kind of left them out of sweeps this year, but um, I think everybody after watching that preview for the next two episodes were just so super psyched about what's going to happen in December. So oh, it's I hope be great so. To be I, I I really do hope so. Um, you know, and Joss. Uh, Joss is special in this in this town in Hollywood uh, in 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 many ways, but uh, but but the one I'm thinking of right now is that he does kind of create a family uh, when he when he makes a show and and it goes beyond the members of of just that show. So you know I know Summer, although we had never worked together, and I know uh, a few of the people involved in Dollhouse and. Firefly and Serenity, um, although we never worked together, because you know Joss creates is such a magnet for uh, for pulling all these people together and keeping a keeping a kind of a through line and a social life and uh, uh, and so it was really neat to actually be on the floor and doing stuff with some of the people that whose work I had admired in other shows of his and uh, I think it was you know at first when he had spoken about weaving myself and other actors from his kind of universe into this show, I I wondered to myself if that was wise, um, that maybe it, it would appear in, uh, too incestuous and uh, and somehow dilute the uniqueness of, of Dollhouse. But I actually don't think it did. I think it's, uh, in fact, made it stronger. I, I really do. Um, it, it's, you know, I think that Fans of his have an affinity anyway for his taste and for the for the people and the and the journeys that the that the actors have made in in other work with him and uh, I think seeing them do something different but with people that 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 they already uh, have an affection for because you've followed them for however many years on on uh, Buffy Angel Firefly Serenity whatever I think that it uh, I think that it works I think it brings a a kind of added um, element to the show, uh, and he didn't overdo it. You know, um, it's it's not it's not like he's recast everybody he's ever worked with, but he did it to great effect, I think, this year with Dollhouse. 
Yeah, I think so, too. And it energizes a lot of the base because Josh has so many dedicated fans and so many, in fact, that, you know, I mean, that kind of, you know, helps, helps that. 